Hello, not from the art studio shed again, uh, still the Wi-Fi won't work. So last time I asked you to have a look to see if you could get some frames because we're going to use these to identify shapes for trees, for a landscape that you're looking at and also introduce perspective that you've touched on previously. So one of the things I want you to do this time is using your frame, if you're out, have a look at trees, the shape of trees or bushes. If you can't get out, go through some of your photographs or pictures and see if you've got trees that you can look very carefully and outline a shape for a tree. Draw a little square or an oblong and then draw a shape that you can see. Break the line up a bit. You don't have to do a hard line. So here are three that I've done. Um, three shapes of trees that were in the garden. And then once you've identified that trees aren't all uniform straight trunks with branches going like that, you're developing your observational skills. So if you can see the second one, second one here, uh, is more of a triangle. The top one is more of a strange circular shape and this one is more of a, a diamond shape. This one you can't even see the trunk. Um, that one a little bit of a trunk, that one clearly a trunk. So already you're de developing observational skills. Your little viewfinder will help you to focus and look for shapes and look for exactly what's there so that you don't make assumptions about things. It also helps you in terms of proportion. So you can see that's really three quarters of the way down all the leaves, the bulk of the tree, the leaves, or that's just a quarter of the way down. Trees are all very dis different. So try out that. And as you can see on here, I've marked in some sort of a line. Trees don't just sprout from the ground in a straight line. They'll have bushes and trees or grass around them. And so you've got some idea of a, a horizontal line there so that you can see that trees are grounded or bushes are grounded. They've got, actually got a base to work from. When you've done that, if on your walking around, you've managed to get some more pens or pencils, I found this one, which is lovely. Um, non-permanent little marker pen. This one I love, Eddington. I found that somewhere. I also found myself a pack of colouring pencils that I didn't know I had. Um, and oddments of things, this beautiful old pencil that was in a cupboard that I've sharpened up. I've no idea what, what B that is but it's quite soft and it's really good for using sideways. Don't forget to sharpen your pencils. If you've got a sharp point on your pencil, if you are using that, you can use it sideways as well as using it for, for drawing freehand. But remember, you can vary the, the strength of your line with how hard you push or the way in which you, you were doing shading. Shading, you can use a variety of different things. And in the first video, you were doing straight lines, you were doing little circles, you were drawing waves. You can use this on a smaller scale for if you're doing shading. So another thing to look out for in your pictures or if you're out walking is where do the shadows fall? Because shadows give you another clue as to wh wh which direction the light's coming from and also adds to the, the perspective so that your brain is recognising that this is a real life situation rather than something that you just imagine. When you finish drawing your shapes and you feel more confident, if you want to, you can work these up. So you can do additional drawings. So the top one, I've used that Eddington pen. The top one, I've done that uh, I've tinted it a bit with some ink. I found an old fountain pen as well. And when I was washing it out, it created a lovely tint. So I've used that to tint these. Um, and again, I've dated it and put what it's for. The next thing that I wanted to do 
was to look for images that you could develop your observational skills even further. So again, using your frame, identify a scene or objects that you feel that you would like to concentrate on drawing. So using my little viewfinder, I decided to start planning out a little sketch in the garden. So that's the Scruffy Art Studio shed that I can't get any Wi-Fi with at the moment. So you look for horizontals, you look for verticals. If there's any perspective, lines of perspective that you can identify, use them. Uh, if there's a fence or something like that, look carefully. Use your viewfinder. So what angle is it that the fence is? Or what angle is it that the door is that's ajar? Don't make assumptions, look carefully. When you're doing sketching, make sure that you sit in the same place. Don't move your chair, don't move around. Make sure that you are viewing from exactly the same position. I'm looking out the window, the postman's just come. Um, you're looking out from exactly the same position. And then begin to identify what's in the foreground, what's in the background, what shapes can you see. And it depends entirely on how you like to work. I work from the background forward. So it's almost as though you're overlaying shapes and you do them very lightly, first of all, as you did with the trees or the bushes or whatever it is that you've decided to do. And then as you work forward, you will find that there's more detail and you need a, a stronger line because you are able to work in a, a more detailed manner. So this one I've worked up, um, and I worked on it for several, but several different times, but always have my chair in the same position. So that one I worked up, and this is the end result. I don't know, can you see? Uh, it looks very dark, um, but it, and we have a, there's no swans in the garden, they're plaster. But those little shapes there are swans. But that's the scruffy art studio shed um, with the door open. So just look very carefully. And that's tinted with colouring pencils, a wash of using that ink, leftover ink. And um, I think a little bit of paint. Was that eyeshadow? I can't remember. But just adding to it. And again, it's got a frame. I want you to think about the importance of you valuing your work and framing it. Frames make a huge difference. This is um, a painting that my granddaughter Ruby did for me. And it's a beautiful little painting, but even better once it's framed, it gives the work status and it draws your eye actually to the artwork. The the different ways that you can add to your the quality of your work. Um, so if you remember your cubes, put it into a frame, colour it. So that's that one. So all the time you're developing different techniques. Uh, there was this was the the tunnel, and I coloured that with different tints and paints. Interestingly, if you're drawing this sort of exercise, it works equally well upside down. And very often you'll see that people are, are looking at things. Does that work? Is that right? So that was the tunnel. This one, oh, this is the letters. So I've done that one. And also this one, the, 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 the station. So I've worked on that one, um, but not too sure about the colours but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it's just exploring and experimenting and as you're going through add little things into your sketchbook so this little one when we started off was just looking for shapes of trees um add in a little piece of paper and then maybe draw, do some extra drawings so remember if you're doing observational drawings in situ you you make sure that you are 
in the same position all the time so that you can very carefully observe lines, shapes, um, and you're able to, to develop some idea of perspective. What's in the foreground, what's in the background. Um, so, yeah, notice shadows, notice where the, the light's coming from. So the light's coming from here, um, the shadows are falling over there. So you, it creates an image that's realistic. The next thing we're going to do is start to look at colour. And if you can get the three primary colours, red, blue and yellow, uh, the thicker the better. But if you've only got, if you can only find watercolours, that's fine. If not, try and create your own little tints from maybe um, my beautiful blue tint was from using a, an old um, ink pen that I was washing out. And that made a beautiful ink colour. So try out different things to see if you can make some tints or colours. Work on your idea of developing your observational skills. Recognise shapes, recognise the depth, the perspective, the foreground, the background, the different shapes and how they overlay. There was one here that I did, I forgot where I put it, which was an, that this one. I developed this one, it was, I'll cross this one, it was it's supposed to be an orchard. So it's the same thing as the perspective, but using your observational skills of trees. This side I did with watercolour paints and that ink. This side I just started using colouring pencils and pencils. Remember, trees aren't flat to the ground, they grow into the ground. So look very carefully at how the trunks go into the ground and what's around trees. The, the next session we'll be looking more at colour. The first one we did, I don't know if you can remember about uh, the, the little squares, and I said, work up your things. One of the things I forgot to say is, when you're doing things like that, you can actually deviate and try out some of your patterns on stones around here. People leave little coloured stones out for other people to find when they go out for their walk. So I've left several little stones out, they disappear. Um, but that's something you could do and try out using different colourways, felt tips, whatever you've got. So I hope you've got some ideas there. Look for shapes, use your viewfinder, develop your observational skills. Don't worry, you can't be wrong. Nobody's going to tell you off. It's just for fun. So I love to you all. I love to your family, friends and former students. And a shout out to Mary and all her friends in the London hospitals. So see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.